Hi there, it's Mr Baker here and today we're going to be looking at electromagnets. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at electromagnets and we're going to be answering this question, how can you change the strength of an electromagnet? Okay, so we've seen how we can make a permanent magnet by lining up the domains of a ferrous material. Um, and we can also make magnetic fields around current carrying wires. So when we move charges in materials, we do a similar thing to lining up the domains and we can make a magnetic field around those things. So if we had a current that's moving through this wire, uh, so up through the wire like this, then we would have this circular patterns of fields around it. We call them the concentric circles. And the field gets weaker and weaker as we get further away from the wire. And we can predict the direction of these magnetic field lines by using something called the right hand grip rule. So the right hand grip rule is basically making a thumbs up symbol like this and pointing your thumb in the direction of the electric current. So the current is going up and so the magnetic field lines are in the direction of the direction of your fingers. So around, um, in this case, anti-clockwise around the direction of that wire. And when the direction of the current changes, the direction of the magnetic field also changes. So a solenoid is a coil wound into a tightly packed helix. Shaping a wire to form a solenoid increases the strength of the magnetic field created by a current through the wire. The magnetic field inside a solenoid is strong and uniform. And it looks a little bit like this. So if you have one turn, one loop in a coil um, or in a solenoid, then you would get these magnetic field patterns around it. So B is the symbol we use for the strength of a magnetic field. And you can see that the magnetic field lines in a single coil are making this shape. If we wind many coils and we make a solenoid, then we get a magnetic field around it that looks very much like the shape of a magnetic field around a permanent magnet. What you'll also see is that there are magnetic field lines going through the center of the solenoid as well. And we can also use a similar rule to the right hand grip rule to find the north and south pole of a solenoid. If in this case you use your fingers to show the direction of the current, then your thumb will point to the north pole. Okay, so one of the things that you might have to do is to investigate how to change the strength of an electromagnet. So what I've got here is a diagram of a solenoid, a coil of wire that's linked up to a battery, and then I've got a load of paper clips. So here's my solenoid, here's my power source, and here are my paper clips. When I move my solenoid into the paper clips and back out, then you would get something like this. You'd see that it might pick up one of the paper clips. So you'd have some kind of magnetic field around that solenoid, and you might be able to pick up one of the paper clips from it. So if I put an iron core in the center of my solenoid and did the investigation again, then you might see that you get a slightly different number of paper clips. You might pick up more paper clips, and this is because when you put an iron core in a solenoid, it increases the strength of the magnetic field. So when an iron core is placed in the solenoid, the strength of the electromagnet increases. Now, when we did that, we had a certain number of turns on the coil. Here we had six turns on the coil. And by making the number of turns on the coil one of my independent variables, one of the things I can change, I can see if that has any effect on the strength of the electromagnet. So when I increase the number of turns on my coil, you can see I've managed to pick up more paper clips. So when the number of turns on the coil increases, the strength of the electromagnet increases. And in fact, the strength of the magnetic field of an electromagnet is directly proportional to the number of turns on the coil. And you might draw a graph, something like this. If you did this as an investigation, you might keep on changing the number of turns on the coil and see how that changed the number of paper clips you could pick up. The number of paper clips would be your way of indicating the strength of the electromagnet. And you would get a line like that, a straight line that goes through zero. So that would indicate that the number of paper clips you picked up is directly proportional to the number of turns on the coil. And as your number of paper clips is telling you how strong the electromagnet is, we can make the conclusion that the strength of the magnetic field is directly proportional to the number of turns on the coil. Okay, so one of the other independent variables I could use 
would be to change the electric current through the electromagnet. So let's see with just one cell what happens. Well, like before, I picked up three paper clips. So if we double the potential difference, then the electric current doubles, and we can see how that affects the strength of the electromagnet. Okay, so by doubling the electric current, you can see that I've increased the number of paper clips I can pick up. And so when the current through the coil increases, the strength of the electromagnet increases. And in fact, the strength of the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current through the coil. So again, you could draw some kind of graph like this. And now the electric current is our independent variable on our x axis. And we would get a similar graph as before. We would see that as the electric current increased, the number of paper clips increased. And because that line is a straight line that goes through zero, we could say that the number of paper clips picked up is directly proportional to the electric current. And so we could say that the strength of the electromagnet is directly proportional to the electric current that flows through it. So how can electromagnets be made stronger then? So we can use an iron core, we can increase the number of coils, and we can increase the current. And all those three things will increase the strength of our electromagnet. Okay, so these are the things we should have been able to do by the end of this lesson. You should be able to state the shape of a magnetic field around a current carrying wire and describe the effect of changing the current on a magnetic field around a wire. You should be able to determine the direction of the field around a current carrying wire and a solenoid. You should be able to describe the factors that affect the magnetic field around a wire and a solenoid. You should be able to determine the polarity of the ends of a solenoid from the direction of the current. You should be able to sketch the shape of the field surrounding a solenoid, and you should also now be able to plan a detailed investigation into the factors that affect the strength of a magnetic field around a solenoid. Okay, so that's the end of this one. This was what we asked at the beginning. How can you change the strength of an electromagnet? So you can change the strength of an electromagnet by either including or not including a, an iron core. You can also change the number of coils, the number of turns in the solenoid, and you can also change the electric current that flows through it. Okay, so that's been another physics video all about electromagnets. I've been Mr. Baker, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.